let's uh, do a quick update. First of all, I'm not financial advice. Consult your licensed financial advisor. I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Before you do anything, consult them. Stocks, currencies, cryptos, everything. Extremely volatile. I bet a lot of it's manipulated. <laughs> and um, don't invest in anything you're not willing to lose or lose sleep over. All right. Let's talk about um, the geo macro because it's becoming very, very important. And then I'm going to talk about gold and silver. And this should be an important update. So I'm doing it. And uh, listen, it's going to be a wild summer. Let's just uh, talk about what's going on. All right, so the dollar share of global reserves tumbles to lowest since 1995, in like 25 years. And this trend is likely to continue because, because the East is rising, the West is falling, including the Euro nations. Like, with their lockdowns and everything, it's not going to work out. Like, I think people there have had enough. I mean, there's tractors dumping manure on, on, in front of uh, Capitol buildings. Uh, that's in France, I believe. All right. So there's a lot of uh, geo tensions going on right now. It looks like the East is expanding. And of course, the sandbox, uh, you know, where all the oil is, things are really heating up over there as well. And I'm not going to go into um, details or anything, but these are big nations. And then, you know, there's Iran and whatnot. They're bigger than uh, I think most Americans realize, or even Europeans. And let's just say there's West forces and then East kind of uh, trying to take control of that area. Meanwhile, uh, in the Pacific and around those islands, around China, things are really heating up as well. I mean, they have fishing boats surrounding islands, and uh, I don't want to get too much into details, but things are definitely heating up globally. As uh, the rise and the fall of empires continues here, that's what it seems to be. That's what it looks like. Um, or the attempt, right? Because maybe the East is starting to see the West as uh, weak. Uh, and not just that, there, there's a port uh, down by this nation over here that they probably want, so they don't want to give up that area. Uh, in uh, Eastern Europe, and they're moving uh, heavy equipment in, very heavy, very serious. Okay. And then we have, like I said, I the Eurozone, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how much longer that experiment's going to last. It's fairly new. It's only a few decades old, right? So, for the people who say the DXY is going to go higher, that might be a reason for it. Also, tensions breaking out. But that doesn't mean that it's going to make gold, silver, and commodities fall in value. Absolutely not. They could go up together. 
That's what people have a hard time understanding. As you can see, um, things are escalating fairly quickly. So, on top of all of that, infrastructure spending, another round of COVID stimmies, and then probably even more. And then yield curve control is coming. I've talked about that in my past couple of videos. It's coming. Uh, right now, the 10-year yields at 1.68. It could spike again. And if it does, they're going to do it. So it's this is really turning out to be the perfect storm for uh for, for commodities overall and precious metal. Um, more, more possible bailouts. Like, listen, I'm actually okay with this. Not that I owe anything. I'm just, because I went to college for like a decade, like Van Wilder. <laughs> um, the millennials, they have no purpose in life. They need to start families, but they can't because they're, they, have, they have anchors around their feet called student loan debt with interest, and they're living in their boomer parents' basements, like not all of them, but a decent amount. So, and by the way, this is all owed to main, I would say 90%, I don't know, a majority of it is, is federal, right? So they could just cancel it. And then that gives the younger generations a chance to, I don't know, have a family, uh, buy a home, and that would boost the economy tremendously. Because out of that, you would get more productivity because uh, people's credits may, may get a little better and then they could go and buy homes, right, and start families. So I'm not against it. I mean, what I'm trying to say is it's not fair to the people who paid it off. It's not. But you should have been smart enough to know that they were going to do this. I think the I think the debt's like over two trillion. So that's a good move. If he does that, it's a good move for him. And and you know I'm no fan, but I think they're gonna do it. So I don't know if it'll happen this year, maybe next. But they're doing everything they can to juice the economy, and they're gonna do it. Now, of course, when they do this, very bullish for metals, even crypto. I mean, by the end of this year, I, it's looking like it's going to be like 10 trillion. And this is just basic, this is basic, like third grade math. You don't have to be a genius to figure out that it's going to push prices of commodities, homes, and everything to the roof, which is inflation. Okay? Now, on top of that, <laughs> on top, so as the East expands and, and it causes tensions and fears, worries, and doubts, people will flock to safe haven. On top of that, never in humanity history have we seen such amounts of money printing globally. And then on top of all that, <laughs> I mean, this is crazier than I even thought. So, and I thought I was going to get pretty crazy, but the East are the ones who've been supplying a lot, a lot of the fabricated um, minerals and rare earth minerals and commodities. Okay, while the West has sort of um, 
I mean, they're still operating, but at no, at nothing compared to what the East has been doing. Now, if there's tensions, they might, they might cut off exports, and then that forces the U.S., Canada, Europe to maybe ease regs and push for more um, mining and maybe give them subsidies so they could do their Green Deal plan or whatever. You know, their infrastructure build out, EVs, smart cities and all that, right? They have to. I mean, it, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Like, you can't keep suppressing your your domestic uh, mining and um, and what is it, resource development with high regs and this and that while importing from the rest of the world when there's high tensions because they'll cut you off and that like i said that's a it's a national security thing so i'm thinking uh i mean if tensions keep rising which they probably will because they're they're not going to stop expanding this is their time this is their decade their century so the West has to do what it has to do to, I don't know, maintain order, sustain power. So they're going to maybe ease uh, regs on mining and maybe give them subsidies, you know, boost that. They have to if they want to do their, their green plan because, believe it or not, in my last video, like I said, it's going to take more oil, it's going to take more commodities and to, to build it out. So, there's no way around it. I don't. So, the East absolutely dominates the production of the space and rare earths are many times seen as uh, the East's strategic leverage. So, exports of rare minerals disrupt, destroy various supply chains around the world. They have done it before. JP Morgan continues writing As with everything else, there is a trade off, and it seems that. The East has more to lose from limiting production of rare earths than it has to gain. Such action would choke off global supply chains and ultimately hit the East's economy. If it was that easy to shut off rare minerals, the East would have probably already used that power by now. That's what JP Morgan says. But, you know, I think what they're going to do is they're going to keep producing but they're going to keep it in the east with the Silk Road. And then they're building out a self-sufficient economy where they won't need the West. They'll keep selling to the West, but goods, they'll sell them goods. But uh, actual, they don't need to sell the West minerals and all of this because we don't use it to make anything anymore. Like we used to, we're, we're de-industrialized, the West. If the West was industrialized, then we would need the raw materials. The East is what is industrialized. And I've made arguments endlessly. That's where real economic expansion and growth is, is from. It's from industrial growth. It's not from people in cubicles. It's not from financializing everything. It's not from, uh, I don't know, <laughs> uh, waitresses and baristas. It's not from all of this. It's not from flipping homes to each other. Again, like if your home price goes up, okay, you sell it. Then what? You have to go buy another one. You have to live somewhere. The new home you're going to buy, the price of that went up as well. So that's not wealth generation. Wealth generation is taking raw materials and turning it into something that not just your own nation wants and needs but you need to export it to the rest of the world because then you could import other things you don't you 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 don't have and need to keep expanding right so the east dominates this but i feel like they need more, and that is why they're expanding literally and physically. 
It's why they're building out a trade route all the way down into Africa, even to South America. And that's to pull the raw material out. Like that book, I, 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 I've been advocating for people to read this or listen to it on Audible. Don't, I, I listen on Audible when you're driving around. You can turn your car into a driving university. Uh, this book is very enjoyable. It's, I highly recommend a good read. It's uh, Economic Hitman. That's what the title is. It's one of the best books I've ever read. That's how really that's how things really work. And the East is doing that right now. And that, that kind of puts and connects the dots and puts everything into um, perspective of how how the world really runs. All right. So with all these tailwinds, I mean, there's no way any amount of manipulation or anything. I mean, rates rose and spiked. So yeah, I made um, metals sell off. And I showed you guys in my last video the correlation between yields and uh, gold and silver, right? So here's gold. This is a monthly uh, chart. Every candle sticks a month. The top was in, what, seven months ago? It hit 2100. I know it's kind of getting a little sloppy here with all the drawings. I mean, this is just a giant bull flag right here. If we could just uh, rebound, test all time highs, that gives you the, the multi decade cup and handle. And it's just going to shoot it to the moon. So, looking at the oscillators, RSI is oversold, MAGB is already crossed a long time ago. The monthly, I would say, is neutral. Slightly bullish, but neutral. But I think the weekly is what I'm really looking at. In the weekly, I had a buy signal four weeks ago. I started scaling in a month ago into my mining stocks again. Very good. The individual mining stocks have been rallying for the past few weeks. Um, but they're still 40%, 50 some are 60 uh, They've uh, pulled back like that amount from, the, from gold's all-time high seven months ago. This is the train about to leave the station. So if we start rallying, gold could get back up above 1780. I mean, it's that's it. The train is leaving the station. And you, you want to just be holding for the next year or two or three or ten, I don't know, and making mad gains, right? So essentially what I'm saying here is I think the bottom's in. I could be wrong, consult your licensed financial advisor, but I think the bottom's in. Now, can there be a temporary dump or something? If the if stock market really dumps, yes, but they're not going to let the stock market dump. They're not. They'll, they'll print another four trillion or whatever they have to. So, because they can't reinflate it if it dumps. So, I think, in, you know what, let's say tensions globally on the macro trigger the, the stock market to dump. Maybe metals will rally. Uh, a good example of that was when Orange Dude fired missiles, uh, like, I don't know, like a few months into his um, first term, right? And... Gold rallied like 40 bucks in like a couple days. So when there's global macro tensions, metals rally, especially gold. And it'll break out. And it, in the manipulation, right, if there is, right, there's a manipulation in all markets, I believe. It's It'll be a managed retreat. 
and they can't stop it. Listen, if they had absolute control, you wouldn't have seen this. This entire rise in the past couple of years of gold, right? Hitting all-time highs. So people who listened to me back in 2018 and 17, and I told them this is this is it, the time to start accumulating mining stocks, you did very well. You're up like, like I don't know, 10x on some of these stocks, 15x. It all depends when you got in. If you're late to the party, you're not late. Like, that would have been the time to really get in for the massive wealth transfer. But where I think this is going, you're still not late. You're not late at all. Gold goes to 5000 bucks. Where do you think these mining stocks are going to go? <laughs> okay. But it would have been better if you got in there. That's what I'm... So I keep telling people, like... Everyone always wants to join the private group when they see everything rallying. They never want to get in on when everything is selling off. Well, guess what? It just sold off for seven months. Maybe this is the good time to buy the dip. And I'm still buying. I'm still buying. So, but I think once, you know, we break out, we test all-time highs, maybe a little pullback, it's gone after that. Like, you want to be, you you want your portfolio ready to go. Like, you have all your shares and your physical, let's say. But, uh, yeah, so that's my strategy, my theory. Can I be wrong? Absolutely. I'm just thinking out loud. So... There you go. That's what I'm thinking. All right, guys. Um, go to my website. Join the private group. Uh, Two twenty, then twenty a month, and then uh, check out all the other links. I post uh, a lot of um, market stuff, all kinds of stuff. Um, anything I find interesting in some of my chat groups or my free um, newsroom, whatever. And um, stay safe, have a happy Easter, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.